Um, Rand Paul, Senator of Kentucky, has become a YouTube celebrity uh, for the videos in which he argues with and against uh, Anthony Fauci on the origins of COVID-19. <clears throat> Uh, those videos of the, often began, often begin with Rand Paul claiming that YouTube censors him, um, <clears throat> but it sounds like uh, he's the one who is trying to censor or at least intimidate YouTube uh, because his videos are widely available and widely shared. <clears throat> Rand Paul has been directly or indirectly arguing that COVID is the consequence of uh, irresponsible research uh, ir irresponsible research projects carried out <clears throat> um, uh, in a Wuhan bio lab and funded uh, by the uh, United States, uh, specifically by an institute that uh, was run uh, by uh, Fauci. Um, <clears throat> so I'll say later uh, that he makes, he makes, Rand Paul makes a lot of sense. But first, first, let me clarify that I am no fan of this uh, politician. Uh, he's a senator from Kentucky, uh, which I consider a failed state that survived, uh, <clears throat> that is surviving thanks to Washington subsidies, uh, thanks to the taxes paid by uh, states like New York and, uh, and California. Uh, it's a quintessential case of government bailout. Uh, second, Rand Paul is one of the politicians who, in my opinion, caused the death of one million U.S. citizens. Um, he is one of the politicians who, uh, to this day, claims that cloth masks are useless and uh, lockdowns uh, counterproductive and so on. The distribution of COVID deaths around the world shows clearly the difference between the countries where people uh, wore masks and the countries where people didn't. Uh, the highest death rates in the United States are in uh, <clears throat> uh, Mississippi, Arizona, Oklahoma, Alabama, Louisiana, Tennessee, Arkansas, and yes, uh, Kentucky. All states where people are reluctant uh, to wear masks because of politicians like uh, Rand Paul. Uh, despite the fact, despite the fact that these states hardly have any travelers from China, unlike, say, California, Kentucky has a COVID death rate that is, it's about 50% higher, 50% higher than California. Who, who do you think gets more travelers from uh, China and, and, and Europe? <clears throat> anyway. Cloth masks are obviously useful and not only for COVID, but for any airborne disease. How useful, we don't know exactly, uh, but wearing a mask is such a small thing uh, to do that it is mind-boggling mind that politicians like Rand Paul uh, would make such a big deal of it. Uh, politicians who, who uh, call scientists irresponsible, <clears throat> maybe they should look at themselves in the mirror. I bet Rand Paul wears seatbelts uh, when he uh, drives on an empty road, even though the chances of being hit by another car is zero. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, Rand Paul has also discouraged people from getting vaccinated. In one of the videos, he says, uh, naturally acquired immunity is as good as a vaccine. In other words, why bother getting a vaccine? Just catch COVID and you'll have better protection from COVID than, uh, uh, <clears throat> than if you were vaccinated. True, but of course, only if you survive. Uh, One million Americans did not survive. Bottom line, in general, I don't think much of Rand Paul's, Rand Paul's recommendations, but he's right to keep talking about gain of function research and the possibility that scientists created uh, COVID. I said possibly, okay? <clears throat> and in any case, it's good that there is a discussion about the dangers of this kind of research, uh, just like we know the, we know the dangers of uh, uh, radioactive materials, of asbestos and, and so on. <clears throat> uh, his theory is that the National Institute of Health, NIH, when it was run by Fauci, uh, was funding 
uh, such dangerous research, in particular in Wuhan, and COVID would be the accidental result, result of that research. Uh, Rand Paul is absolutely right about the need for biosafety at these uh, bio labs. <clears throat> uh, but of course, the question is where it was uh, when the US uh, Congress, where he has served for a long time, uh, uh, should have uh, passed uh, appropriate laws. Easy to blame Fauci, uh, but what about also blaming the US Congress for inaction? Uh, by the way, the US Congress has been controlled by his party, the Republican Party, for most of the last 20 years. <clears throat> now, back to Rand Paul's accusations. Uh, Fauci denies that it was gain of function research. I read the papers, I agree with Rand Paul, call it what you want, but the goal was gain of function. Uh, the NIH run by Fauci was founding did fund, did fund the Echo Health Alliance in New York, which spent some of the money, <clears throat> not most of it, some of it, uh, a minority of it, to fund gain of functional research at the infamous Wuhan lab, the Wuhan Institute of Virology. <clears throat> uh, Rand Paul, by the way, it's an institute that uh, with a very respectable scientist, just infamous because it's it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, you know at the at the heart of these discussions. Uh, Rand Paul does a simple syllogism: <clears throat> um, dangerous research in one lab, deadly virus emergence in Wuhan, and concludes <clears throat> that the Wuhan lab accidentally created uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, the virus of COVID. So, in my opinion, Rand Paul has a point to start the discussion. Uh, however, now I will tell you what Rand Paul never tells you for whatever reasons. Um, as, as I said, you can see countless videos on YouTube uh, in which Rand Paul tells you the details of his uh, theory. Now, I'm telling, you, I'm telling you what he doesn't tell you in these countless videos. First of all, uh, in October 2014, Barack Obama, <coughs> a president hated by Rand Paul, um, following a string of high profile biolab uh, uh, incidents, uh, declared a moratorium on gain of function or gain of function research. He said no more gain of function research until we know more about it. In December 2017, there was a new president, well, sort of president, Donald Trump, uh, he lifted the Obama moratorium. In other words, Trump, uh, upon becoming president, authorized gain of function experiments that Obama had stopped. In 2019, just before COVID started, Trump also withdrew the US observers that were deployed in many Chinese labs Thanks to the program PREDICT. Now, PREDICT was launched in 2009 by Obama, and China had agreed to have US observers monitor its labs. Translation, US scientists had access, had access to Chinese labs. <clears throat> uh, that, that monitoring activity was killed by Trump just a few months before COVID started. Uh, Rand Paul doesn't tell you this, but basically the activities that were on the lab look so mysterious today, not because China wanted to hide, to hide them, uh, but because Trump decided that the US uh, should not keep observers in China. Incidentally, Trump also disbanded the global, it was called global health security team. Uh, it was instituted by Hillary Clinton. Uh, that team would have been very useful when COVID started spreading in the United States. Um, I'm not implying any nefarious uh, intentions. Uh, the reasons for killing these programs was probably just Trump's incredible stupidity and incredibly low IQ. There's another thing that Rand Paul doesn't tell you. Uh, his theory that the virus emerged because of gain of function research is valid. 
but it doesn't only apply to Wuhan. <clears throat> so recently I had the pleasure to discuss the one lab with uh, a scientist uh, who knew in person all the scientists involved uh, in this uh, story. He personally has never been to uh, Wuhan, but he knew all the people who went there, came back and so on. It tells me that we wildly overestimate China's biotechnology. I think in general, we all overestimate China technology. The one lab was certainly capable <clears throat> of copying US experiments and collaborating with US labs, <clears throat> but hardly capable um, of doing anything truly groundbreaking. <clears throat> My source also sent me a list of the main scientists working on gain of function in the world uh, based on the most influential publications of the last uh, 10 years or so. The only Chinese names are Chinese scientists who work in the USA plus <clears throat> bad woman, the, the woman who leads uh, the, the Wuhan lab. Um, but the vast majority, vast majority are US scientists <clears throat> with Anglo-Saxon names. The key experiment in this field was done in 2012 at the University of Wisconsin uh, Madison, where they tweaked an avian flu uh, virus so it could be transmitted between ferrets, not between humans. <clears throat> but it was a <clears throat> that was a groundbreaking experiment. And the first lab to report the creation of an artificial virus was at the University of North Carolina in 2015. <clears throat> I could go on. <clears throat> This one's, by the way, in 2015, they took a, a version of the SARS virus and combined it with a coronavirus taken from the now infamous uh, horseshoe bats of um, uh, <clears throat> Yunnan province in, uh, in China. <clears throat> I could go. I asked my source flat out if anyone in the world had the capability to create a virus like uh, the COVID virus. He replied, in the US, potentially several labs, in Europe, some, in China, none. So he thinks we overestimate what they could do. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, in general, the chance is very low, um, to be precise. My source says so. I also think there is consensus that it's not. It wouldn't be easy, but you know, again, an accident could could happen. Gain of function is a is a dangerous research. <clears throat> uh, it's not that surprising, uh, actually. That um, so the the, the 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 point is, what about the coincidence? The fact that the virus emerged in Wuhan, right where this bio lab uh, exists. Uh, it's, it's not that surprising, actually, if COVID emerged in a place, if COVID originally emerged in a place where there was no biolab scientist, well, probably we, we don't know. We wouldn't know. Uh, in Wuhan, there was a biolab. Uh, there were scientists who could, who could figure out very quickly. They figured out very quickly that A, that it was a new virus, B, that it was dangerous, C, they, <clears throat> uh, they sequenced the genome and thanks to their uh, speed at, at providing information about this virus, somebody in Germany came up with the first COVID test. Uh, <clears throat> Moderna and BioNTech uh, started working on the vaccine and so on and so on. So uh, the fact that that it emerged in Wuhan <clears throat> uh, is certainly circumstantial evidence, but again, uh, it, it had to be discovered in a place where there were scientists uh, competent enough to discover a new virus. <clears throat> um, it could be that COVID was already spreading in other places in China, and there was no scientist there to, to find out that people were dying of a new virus. So the one lab per se, the fact that Wuhan has a bio lab per se is not a smoking gun, although it is, it remains a major coincidence. Uh, as we all know, the Spanish flu uh, that killed a lot more people a century ago didn't originate in Spain. It's called Spanish because Spain was the first country to talk about it. <clears throat> but it actually originated in the United States, probably in Kansas. So if <clears throat> anyway. uh, so if Rand Paul 
told us these things, uh, uh, more people would be interested in knowing about uh, not only Donald Trump's decisions, but about the US labs. They were working with Wuhan on gain function. And then according to my source, a way more um, skilled, competent, advanced. <clears throat> um, remember that the 2013 experiment frequently frequently mentioned by uh, Rand Paul, uh, they, they created a virus that could be transmitted directly from bats to people. Well, that experiment was carried out by a joint team of United States and Chinese scientists. It, it wasn't just Wuhan. It wasn't just Wuhan carrying out that gain of function research and Wuhan partners in the United States uh, were, <clears throat> were and are much more advanced, advanced labs. Um, one of them, the bio lab of Fort Detrick, was shut down by the CDC a few months before COVID emerged, I think in August 2019. And so for just four months before COVID emerged, we, we have never, to this day, I haven't seen a clear explanation of what caused the CDC to shut down an entire lab. And I haven't seen any interview with people who work there who could tell us more. So Rand Paul uses a valid logic, but then makes sure to shield the US labs from any investigation. It, it only, you know, it, it keeps targeting Fauci, but <clears throat> uh, so his investigation is just left half unfinished. In reality, his own logic um, raises quite a bit of a suspicion of US labs, his logic, not mine. Rand Paul himself, uh, repeatedly said that 11 US labs are engaged in gain of function research. We don't know how he came up with 11, but he said it, he said 11, okay, in China's one. So <clears throat> uh, to make things worse, we heard several people claim that COVID was already circulating in the United States and in Western Europe before people started dying in Wuhan. <clears throat> uh, let me mention a strong Trump supporter, Victor Hanson, uh, of Stanford University, he wrote a book titled The Case for Trump. So he's a, he's a strong Trump supporter. Read his article in, National, in the National Review in um, March 2020, never retracted. <clears throat> so, so some people think that, that COVID was already spreading in the United States before it started killing people in Wuhan. So Rand Paul makes a good point, but forgets some important details that follow for his own, from his own theory, not from my theory. Uh, Rand Paul uses circumstantial evidence to blame the Wuhan lab, <clears throat> but circumstantial evidence could also be used in the opposite direction. Um, all scientists are honestly puzzled that the death toll in Europe and Latin America, countries with many travelers to and from the United States, their death rate is so much higher than the death rate in the countries bordering China. If you look at the world map of COVID, the highest death rates seem to originate from the East Coast of the United States and then spread to Europe, South America and inland the United States. Uh, somehow the people who traveled a lot with Wuhan didn't get infected as much as the people who traveled a lot with the United States. <clears throat> of course, it could be just a coincidence. It could be something we don't know about the variants. Uh, <clears throat> it could just due to the incredible stupidity of the Trump administration that methodically ignored the science. But if that is the case, maybe Rand Paul should also talk about Trump, not only about Fauci as the cause of the death uh, of one million Americans. Now, a few words about the scientific studies that Rand Paul frequently mentions. Uh, not the most note, most of these studies came from China. The vast majority of what we know about this virus was published early on by Chinese scientists in English language journals. After reading these studies, many scientists, many Western scientists actually, concluded that the COVID virus came from a bat virus. 
uh, unless I miss something, the Chinese actually never said so. One of their early papers specifically says those, bait, those bats <clears throat> were not sold at the Wuhan market. Uh, Rand Paul is right about, uh, about this. Two years later, there is still very little evidence to support the theory that COVID evolved from bat viruses. He's right about this. Right? We, it was assumed from the beginning that it was a zoonotic virus, a virus you know, transmitted from animals. But you, you need an intermediate species, and that has never been found. <clears throat> so even the scientists who believe in, uh, in the natural um, occurrence of uh, uh, COVID, uh, they don't have the evidence that, that there's, that there's one, one piece missing. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> by the way, they did find the evidence with SARS, but not with this one, not with COVID. Uh, incidentally, the frequently mentioned fact that the genome of the COVID virus is 96.2% identical to the genome of the coronavirus found in the horseshoe bats of Yunnan province. Uh, another piece of information that originally came from the <clears throat> From the Wuhan Institute of Virology, so that that similarity is not as impressive as it sounds. Ninety six point two percent identical is not conclusive evidence genetically <clears throat> identical is not conclusive evidence of a close relationship. For example, humans share not ninety six percent; we share ninety nine percent of our genome of our genes <clears throat> with chimps. But the 1% of difference makes a huge difference. <clears throat> Although humans like Donald Trump are known to behave like chimps. In general, the scientific studies that Rand Paul likes to mention are at best tentative. We still know very little about this virus. And the author of those studies uh, get annoyed when Rand Paul politicians like Rand Paul or the media mentioned their studies that are only tentative, uh, in some cases, not even peer reviewed. <clears throat> uh, sometimes they're preprints, you know, you can post anything on the internet, doesn't mean that that study has been verified. Uh, in particular, a typical mistake is to assume that we haven't found something uh, that, that because we haven't found something, then it doesn't exist. Sometimes it simply means that we were not looking for it and it takes time to find it. So that's the case of a feature that you find referred in some of these um, studies that the full cleavage site. It's a feature that some people have considered the smoking gun for the theory that COVID was made in a lab. Why? Because this feature was never found in nature. <clears throat> um, well, we never found it in nature because we weren't looking for it. And now that they're looking for it, they started finding it in nature. And suddenly that feature doesn't look so mysterious anymore. Now, what is my own opinion of the original COVID? I don't know. Uh, we know so little about this virus and we still know relatively little about viruses in general. Uh, the, first corona, the first coronavirus was identified in 64, uh, I think. And the first structure of a virus was uh, described in 77. I mean, we're talking a very, very young science. Uh, there could be a simple explanation for COVID, or it could be that our very ignorance of viruses caused the pandemic, <clears throat> as Rand Paul suspects. Uh, I have no idea. At this point, I, I, I just don't have the science that can answer these questions. Uh, Rand Paul, Rand Paul Lays, lays down, lays out a lot of circumstantial evidence, uh, but omits some of the possible consequences of his uh, evidence because they would be politically unpleasant, especially when they implicate Donald Trump's uh, incompetence. Uh, Note that Donald Trump has endorsed Rand Paul for re election in 2022. So that could explain, <clears throat> yeah, it is popular among Republicans to attack Fauci. Uh, it is not popular in the Republican party to attack Trump. So that could explain 
the glaring omissions in Rand Paul's uh, uh, YouTube videos. <clears throat> so I totally agree, by the way, I totally agree with Rand Paul that China is acting as if they have something to hide. There's no question about that. From the very beginning, uh, China's biggest mistake was then when they expelled 13 foreign journalists uh, who were at the very beginning, uh, I don't remember, February, March, 2020, uh, China expelled foreign journalists who were investigating uh, COVID. Big mistake, big mistake. Everybody, including me, started thinking China is hiding something. What? I don't know. Maybe they're just paranoid. It, it is a paranoid uh, uh, system. Uh, but with all due respect, Rand Paul too is acting as if he has something to hide. After you open a can of worms, you should at least admit that there are worms inside. Thank you.